Hey, welcome back. I'm really excited. I got something in the mail. It just showed up. I'm going to do an unboxing in this video. And this is going to be a collaboration video with Paul Pinto. You definitely got to go check out Paul Pinto's channel. I'll put a link in the description. I'll put a thing up here for you to click. But he's an awesome maker. He's only 18 years old and it's amazing what he's able to do at his age and the tools he has. He has a whole series where he puts together a forge, he builds a hydraulic press, and he's making some amazing projects already, doing some blacksmithing, doing some metal work. He even did a map of the United States which he welded up in pieces of metal. This box contains something that he made for me that's very special and I'm very excited to, to get this from Paul. All right, so let's see what he sent us. Laurel, we'll take the, how about this knife? Yeah, I am ready. So I never saw orange packing. Where's okay. this guy from? He's that's from Connecticut. It's in here. Ooh. Whoa, so this it's is, heavy. yes it is. Oh, he put tape on it. Whoa. Look at that. Wow. Whoa, that is awesome. Look at that. He made that. Here's what it looks like. Very nice work, Paul. You can see it's nice and round on this side. This is called a rounding hammer. And on this side, it's more of a hexagon shape. But his finished work and everything is really nice. Look at that. Wow, what is that? I think it's around three pounds. This inspires me to get my forge really set up a lot better and to do some blacksmithing myself. So we're going to make a nice handle for this. i got to do something special for this handle. So maybe this old piece of oak from a barn will do it. This says a lot of damaged spots in it. I don't know if I can really get much good usable lumber out of this, but there seems to be a spot right here that's pretty clear of knots and the grain orientation is pretty good. So although hickory is the preferred choice of most people, if you talk to them, if you look it up, everyone goes with hickory. Traditionally, handles are made of all types of wood, whatever was available and whatever is going to be strong and durable. So I'm thinking that the oak from that barn wood will hold up over time. And you know, if it doesn't, I'll just make a new one. So I haven't been shy about trying different types of woods for handles. For example, for this Boy Scout uh, plum hatchet right here, I used walnut and that has held up so far. And of course it's not going to go, this is not going to undergo the type of abuse that a blacksmith hammer will. Then for this plum rafting ax that I did a video on not too long ago, this is a birch handle. And uh, I really like this, it turned out really nice. You typically don't ever hear of anybody using birch for handles, but I think it has in the past been something that was kind of common in Europe and um, even probably here in the United States uh, back before the internet. So, you know, you can try these different types of woods. If they break, okay, they break, then you just make a new one out of something stronger. So let's go for it and make it out of this old piece of barn wood. As far as the handle style goes, this is my great-grandfather's cross-peen hammer, and it has a really old handle on it. The only thing about this, it's comfortable, but it's a little bit thin here. I think I want to make something like this, but just a little bit thicker. Uh, I do want to have it so that it tapers down here and gets progressively thicker. I want to make a longer handle, and uh, one thing I was reading about and I think makes sense is that if you put a slight taper on the handle, then you don't have to fight so hard with it trying to slip out of your hand as you're using it.
I have this old spring scale here. We're gonna see how much this head weighs. So we got just over 1,400 grams, close to 1,500 grams, which is about three and a quarter pounds. And I'm gonna try putting a uh, metal wedge in here. I have one of these metal wedges right here that I got from Andre from Switzerland. It's nice enough to send me some of these metal wedges. I'm interested to see how that would work. There we go. It's definitely wedged in there tight now. Say hi. I'm super happy with how this hammer turned out. It really works well to draw out the material. I still have a lot of learning to do when it comes to blacksmithing, but I think this hammer is definitely a step in the right direction. So again, thank you, Paul, for that. And there's gonna be a uh, link to click on his video to see how he made this hammer. He's gonna show in detail how he goes through his process of making these. It's very interesting. So definitely check that out. Things I would do differently next time is I would put a thinner blade on to cut the kerf, and I would also use a wider wedge. I found that this material the old oak was so dry that it tended to crack a little bit when I tried to drive this wedge in. The circular wedge was a great idea. Um, I would try that again for any kind of axe handles or anything. It does seem to reduce the amount of splitting you get when you put a metal wedge in there. It moved slightly on me after I was using it, so I drove the metal wedge in there a little bit deeper. But other than that, it's holding up really nicely. It feels really good. I like the shape of it. I like the fact that it has that taper on it. I tend to hold it somewhere right around there and uh, it feels really nice there for me and my hand. So if you're new to the channel, please subscribe, check out my other videos, hit that thumbs up, it definitely helps the videos and I'll see you on the next video.